September 2nd to order and then would invite you all to rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Councilwoman Barnum. Councilman Perticone. Here. Councilman Seeley. Present. Councilwoman Scrobach. Here. Supervisor Bello. Here. And attorney for the town. Here. Thank you. Okay, before we get started, I just want to have a quick announcement. There's going to be the uh, public hearing tonight uh, for the Aronicoi Comprehensive Master Plan is going to start at 7.35. Uh, we can't start the public hearing prior to 7.35. Um, the town board, um, I'm going to ask in a moment um, for a motion to enter into executive session, and I'll tell you why. And then we will reconvene and uh, open the public hearing promptly at 7.35. So I uh, uh, thank you for your patience. Um, and uh, so pursuant to Section 105 of the New York State Public Officer's Law, I would move to enter into executive session to discuss collective negotiations pursuant to Article 14 of the Civil Service Law and to discuss matters leading to the employment of a particular person. Um, can I have a motion? Moved. And a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Motion carries. Thank you. <coughs>
Thank you all for your patience. Uh, do I need to do a motion to... We're going to get back into... Yeah. Back back. Mm -hmm. okay. I have a motion to go back into session. Moved. And a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries. And Barbara, let's do the one item for board action quick, and then we'll open the public hearing. Item number 9, STB 2014-1, authorizing the hiring of a police officer candidate to attend the police academy. Is there a motion? Moved. And a second? Second. Uh, any questions or comments for the chief or for Beth? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries. Public hearing, PH9 STB 2014-1, upon the matter of approving the Town of Arundaquite's comprehensive master plan. Uh, can I have a motion? And a, a motion to open the public hearing? A, a motion? And a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Uh, motion carries. Before we uh, call forward... Uh, the speakers who are signed up to speak tonight, and then if you did not have an opportunity to speak, uh, we, you will be uh, given an opportunity to if you hadn't had a chance to speak and, or sign up today. Uh, but I want to start up with a few comments. Um, uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the community uh, who have shared their comments with us uh, through the public forums, uh, the public forum hosted by the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, as well as the first public hearing at the last town board meeting. Uh, we also received several emails uh, and a lot of informal dialogue, and it's all been uh, uh, very much appreciated, appreciated and helpful. Um, and I appreciate the time and attention you've given to this plan. Community feedback, as I said from the beginning, has played an invaluable role in completing the comprehensive master plan uh, and preparing for its adoption. Uh, during the review pr process, we did receive a lot of uh, positive feedback related to the completion of the plan and confirmation on the plan's overall direction. However, in response to community comments, we've also made some edits to the plan's content to address some concerns and to clarify the town's plan for the future. Uh, so what I wanted to make clear tonight is that we have listened uh, and we have made um, some uh, edits, and so I want to go over a few of those today before uh, we open the floor. Uh, I also want you to know that we, uh, there were some uh, required reviews that have been completed. The plan has undergone a review by Monroe County, uh, which is a step uh, in the adoption process. The Monroe County uh, Department, uh, the, Monroe, the County's Development Review Committee uh, reviewed the plan and had no substantive comments. They referred the plan to the Monroe County Department of Transportation for their review as well. Uh, the Monroe County DOT identified a few minor edits on a handful of transportation and site design related recommendations contained in the draft plan. Um, so the plan has been updated to address those comments, specifically those related to encouraging cross access, appropriately locating street trees and enhancing streetscapes in areas with limited rights of way. Um, and then to the concerns raised uh, at the public hearing, um, we had a number of recommendations that I wanna go over. It was uh, first rec recommended um, that we replace the term inner ring suburb with a first tier suburb. Uh, to reflect the more current planning reference uh, for communities located adjacent uh, to a city, city uh, to the uh, region's uh, city center. Um, so we did make those updates throughout the plan, and you can see those as you go through uh, the document. Uh, there was also a concern uh, uh, raised about identifying the gateways uh, into Aronicoy and that those gate number of gateways needed to be expanded. Um, so we did revise uh, the bullet on page 3-10 that called out the examples of our town's key gateway roadways as revised to include St. Paul Boulevard and Pattonwood Drive. So those will be in the addition to the already identified Culver Road, Empire Boulevard, Winton Road, North Goodman Street, Hudson Avenue, and Seneca Avenue. There was also a concern raised by a number of individuals about the higher density residential development and senior housing and potential negative impacts uh, that that could have on existing neighborhoods. So in response to those concerns, the future land use section, section four, has been updated in two key areas. Under the description of the residential land use category, page four dash three, the, and the narrative around senior housing and the future zoning changes discussion, page four dash 33. The language of the plan has been modified to make it more clear the context and design of future residential development will respect existing character and avoid adverse impacts to neighborhood settings. 
The plan now calls for future zoning modifications to include performance standards and or criteria to ensure future development enhances the quality of our neighborhoods and housing stock. A suggestion was also made by a number of individuals that the comprehensive plan should address a long-standing issue in Seabreeze relative to a new, uh, more uh, permanent outlet bridge structure. And uh, therefore, so we did make a, an edit there on section 3-19. It was updated to include a recommendation to explore accessibility to increase circulation and public safety pertaining to uh, vehicle traffic, pedestrian traffic, and boat traffic. Um, and then the other area that was raised was in regards to the installation of new sidewalks, particularly in areas near elementary, middle, and high schools. And Section 3-14 has been updated to more specifically call for connectivity of our sidewalk system. For example, completing areas such as the north side of Titus Avenue so that residents north of Titus can better access the new public library without having to cross Titus Avenue multiple times. Um, there was also a number of, just a, not a number, I'd say just a couple of grammatical spelling changes, things like that, that were updated throughout the plan as well. So, um, so I just wanted to go over those before we open the public hearing. I'm going to go down and grab uh, the sign-in list, and then uh, we can get started. Mm -hmm. I also want to make clear, too, uh, the draft for those watching at home and those who are here as well. Uh, the updated draft of the master plan with what I just discussed is on the website now, the town website, and it will be available in the clerk's office uh, and again at the public libraries uh, tomorrow. So we should, uh, so please feel free to check that out um, if you want to see, uh, clarify what um, I had just said. Uh, so we have a number of speakers signed up tonight, and like I said, if you didn't have a chance to sign up, uh, you'll be, you will be given an opportunity uh, after um, these folks come forward. Um, so our first speaker is Terry Carter. Terry Carter, 99 Oak Ridge Drive. Prior to adopting a new master plan, the board should fully implement the proposed policy to evaluate all rezoning applications and obtain resident input before they are accepted for formal consideration. This will provide a safety mechanism while the new master plan matures and will pretend, prevent misinterpretation of any vague or inaccurate content until such content is identified and removed. Terms like in general, major thoroughfares and appropriate areas lack precision and could be interpreted in different ways. Higher density development must fit in the areas for which it is proposed. R1 stays R1. Developers will interpret the master plan for their benefit and this is simply business. We would all do the same. I am not against development, just the opposite. We need to get the most out of what land we have but all development needs to fit the proposed locations. There are areas of the town with two-story apartments that could accommodate three-story. It fits in those areas. The future of Irondequoit cannot be dependent on large-scale retail, especially malls. That did not work in the past, and it will not work in the future. The Medley Center tells us that. The Ridge Road East Corridor, I believe, should become an area of small-scale, high-tech manufacturing, R&D, and highly skilled operations. As examples, Precision instruments, laboratory equipment, specialty metals, rare earths, optical, small-scale fabrication, laboratory testing, solar energy, nanotechnology, medical equipment, surgical kits, environmental testing and cleanup, specialty seals and gaskets. The list goes on and on. Correcting an environmental problem costs a lot more than preventing it from happening. However, prevention usually increases the cost of a project so the developer will try to avoid spending. SECRA and other laws must be followed. Planning needs to be an ongoing process, not an event. Long-term plans are strategic plans and rarely get fully implemented because they must evolve to reflect changes in demographics, economic conditions, laws, politics, technology, job creation, and so on, so, and so on all the factors that go into a plan. What get implemented are the individual development projects, which are tactical plans. The master plan must be precise enough to guide the development projects while protecting the integrity of our neighborhoods and expanding our tax base. Let's get the zoning correct and fully exploit what we have. Thank you for your time and attention. Good night. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Uh, the next person signed up to speak is Anthony Sortino.
Tony Sorrentino, 310 Bay Village Drive. I've lived in the Rhino Court since 1964. I'm also past president of the Chamber of Commerce and on the president board. I love this town, but what frustrated me is the prior administrations that started this process for a master plan and stopped. Uh, in um, August of 2009, plan was draft was done, passed it out. Since then, I and the chamber have said, complete it, get it done. Nothing, nothing, nothing done. So I'm very pleased that this board and the supervisor and commend you for going forward with something that absolutely needed to be done. Uh, town of Aronacoit, as well as um, majority of towns in the cities in the state, had little growth in its tax base through new housing development or through new development or redevelopment of commercial property. The State Department of Taxation and Finance reports that a review of municipal tax rolls between 2009 and 2010 indicate that about 79% of the towns and cities had a tax base growth under 1%. An updated master plan would be an impetus for new development and redevelopment. An example is I-Square. Uh, that took off and it's working out very well because there was a map, a guide. This is what to do and this is how you do it. Work on history, work on the Town of Veronica Comprehensive Plan began in 2007 with an inventory analysis of the town and its surroundings. October 2nd, 2008, the town hosted a public meeting to initiate the master plan progress. In August 2009, the town's consultants presented the draft master plan to the town board department heads, really ready to be adopted. Nothing was done. And at last, the town intends to adopt a resolution for final approval. Uh, I commend Supervisor Bellow, the town board, for going forward with the master plan, which should have been done in August 2009. And since that time, I and the chamber have said, do something, do something. Well, it's not right. Do it. Even if it's wrong, at least you have a plan to follow. <laughs> the master plan establishes a vision and the expectations for the future development, redevelopment, and revitalization of the town. The master plan is a policy document. It provides guidance on when and how the town should and will grow in the next 20 years. It serves as a basis for zoning, local land use regulations, capital improvements, and it's comprehensive, providing plans and action strategies for new development and redevelopment. The master plan contains the goals and policies for policymakers to consider in reviewing development and redevelopment proposals. The town's master plan includes a focus on the Ridge Road corridor uh, for development and redevelopment East Ridge Road as well as a focus on several waterfront districts. Given its high visibility and ease of access, the corridor remains an attractive development, redevelopment and revitalization to contribute positively to the long-term improvement of the town's tax base. The total assessed valuation of the corridor as I've been told, has decreased approximately $1 million. Therefore, the town must adopt a redated master plan, especially as it applies to the East Ridge Road corridor, as soon as possible to encourage new development and redevelopment of the corridor with a goal to increasing and maximizing tax base. An important goal of the master plan, as I see it, is to create high-density mixed uses on the Ridge Road corridor. That's the way to go. That's modern zoning. The draft master plan also places particular focus on Aronicoit's waterfront. Aronicoit's name, you've heard it many times, Seneca Indian Nation, where the lands and waters meet. The town is the only peninsula in this whole area. Water on three sides, and it's never been fully developed. Uh, town waterfront includes a diverse arrangement of natural features and recreation assets. The town's waterfront must be developed and redeveloped as soon as possible. This also includes and increases the maximum town tax base. Waterfronts and urban settings are mammoth engines of economic revitalization and regeneration. Animated waterfronts with boats and promenades attract housing, shops, restaurants, and bring new jobs. The Ronacoy Chamber of Heart 
Commerce wholeheartedly supports the town efforts to adopt a master plan. The benefits of having an updated comprehensive master plan include consistency in decision making. The plan gives decision makers a steady point of reference for the land use related actions. Ability to make informed decisions. The plan provides facts on existing conditions and trends, enabling decision makers to better understand the impact of their decision versus relying on a gut instinct. Achieve predictability. The plan deserves, describes rather, where and what type of development the community desires. This information allows individuals to plan for the purchase and use of property consistent with the community goals. Wise use of resources. The plan includes information from different departments and sources. This information can be used in deciding, prioritizing which products to undertake and which to postpone, what to do, what not to do. It can also be used to direct the location of utility extensions and road improvements. And last but not least, preserving community character. The plan describes the, the town's vision for the future and establishes its existing and intended growth. It permits the community to identify what is important and how it should be protected. Uh, this town has had a great past. It's going to have a greater future because of the decor which, which you've started. And the Chamber of Commerce is wholeheartedly supporting this plan, this town board. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Sortino. Um, the next speaker signed up is Richard Barone. Richard Barone, 154 Allwood Drive. Um, the master plan has a wealth of information in the first part of it. Uh, I recommend everyone take a look at that because it shows how this town has changed. It shows that the discretionary income of the residents in this town has dropped uh, about $7,000 down to $53,000. So that means less discretionary income for retail. So retail is not the answer. We have over 20 vacant businesses in town, some vacant for eight, nine years. Some of the new businesses have not gone into those vacant spaces. They've gone into other spaces that were not retail. So we're not really going ahead here. <clears throat> I was at the school board meeting a few weeks ago, the Western Underquite, and they announced there were five challenges to the assessments in this town. One, they had to pay $47,000 to Rite Aid on Titus and Hudson. Um, the other Rite Aid also is suing the town. Walgreen is suing the town for something like $270,000. Excuse me, that's Rite Aid on Ridge Road for $270,000. So the tax base is not the key. Why? Because these businesses are challenging the tax base and it's lowering it. You bring in new business, but how long are they going to last? Tim Hortons just closed. Starbucks, I'll guarantee you, will close in Culver Ridge once they open up on Ridge and uh, North Goodman Street. Specifically on the master plan on the high density, and I, I appreciate that language, Mr. Supervisor, about the character of the neighborhood. However, the previous or current master plan specifically states that the Titus Avenue corridor remain R1. Now that is very clear. Once you start talking about character, now you're in an area of interpretation. And that's always fought in the courts. So I really feel strongly that the new master plan should include the reference to R1 for the Titus corridor east of the town hall, basically, and onward. Uh, having dealt with the state environmental under the, well, I was on the planning board and as a town board member, I have a concern that you are changing some things that can have an impact on the environment. Therefore, I strongly urge this board to do the seeker, the environmental study on what you're changing. And I, again, feel that this update is good. I don't agree with all of it, but most of it I agree with. But I think you need to look at those areas where you are making changes that affect the environment. Uh, there may not be many of them, but Titus Avenue is one of them. 
And uh, finally, I wanted to mention that I just got information today, and again, this speaks to the senior housing need that we have in this town, and there is one. My mother lived in a senior housing for a number of years before she passed. Um, and it was always a waiting list, and there still is, for the five modest uh, senior housing we have in town, which are very good for the most part, by the way. She was in at least two of them, and she was in the legacy. <clears throat> I received information today that legacy has um, ability for 94 uh, apartments. They have occupied now 78. And that's consistent with two previous studies that we did uh, where we got actual information from the senior housings and also from legacy. So again, the idea that we do not need high-priced, high-cost senior housing um, of that nature. That market is saturated, and I think I don't know if you want to. I don't know if it's necessary, but I, it may be a good idea to identify in the master plan the type of senior housing we need in this town that it may be modest cost housing for seniors, not uh, you know something that's expensive. Uh, and I mentioned, I think, before the area of assisted care, which may be the up and coming uh, area. So again, I strongly feel that you need to look at the environmental impact um, on some of the areas that uh, you are changing in the master plan. And thank you for the work that was involved. Great. Thank you, Mr. Barone. Uh, the next speaker signed up to speak is uh, Jean Wells. Hi. I'm also here about seniors. So um, I didn't know a lot about your master plan. I've lived here for 11 years, and I just tell you, I didn't notice. I'm sorry. It's your master plan. It's your, <laughs> it's your master plan. It's our master plan. That's I right. am very glad, though, to hear about the sidewalks because I lived at Norridge. I moved down to Birch, and I've stood at that corner staring at that traffic like never being able to go down the street. Mm -hmm. So thank you. <laughs> I hope that's first. You're welcome. Is, um, Supervisor Bellow, you've been invited by NORC to come speak next Wednesday. I am part of NORC. Okay. Um, and after the article Friday, I talked to Nancy Blakefeld, who runs NORC for us, and thought that maybe... Um, broader market should know about NORC and what we do. For all, do any of you know NORC? NORC is actually located right here on King's Highway, the, only the east side. Can you I, tell us what NORC stands for? Yes, I can. As a matter of fact, this might even help you. I, I, the nice ladies in your um, office told me it would help. I know, I know, some of this I know what it stands for. Oh, then, okay, tell us. That would be a naturally occurring retirement community. Houses as long as well as apartments, sure. which is very rare. Uh -huh. So they say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. A, a neighborhood naturally occurring retirement community. They're, they have a five year grant, and we've just been told that our NORC is going to close. They are going, the Catholic Family Center is opting out of the grant before it is completed. And again, after reading the article in the paper, I did start reading your whole master plan, not knowing that there was another revised vision. So I'm sorry, I'm going with old news as of Friday. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so um, basically, is what the idea did, it came out of New York City to keep people in their homes. The problem is the model did not trans so well, translate so well to up here because um, my understanding is the paperwork is horrendous to keep this going and they want a lot of in-kind things, which our area, well, Monroe County, it's not that kind of situation, like getting a free apartment to have our office in and things like that. The NORC office is actually in the King's Court apartment. They get a little price break. It's a one-bedroom apartment. We use the um, living room as our community room, the kitchen, and the bedroom is Nancy's office, and it's shared with other staff. So what really resounded when I read your plan about the needs of seniors is that we are almost an exact model of what it sounds like what you want to do in the plan. So I didn't want you to lose the opportunity to know that we're right there. Not only could we possibly be saved, which would be great, 
but it also tells you what the need is. Now, I talked with Nancy today. She supervises about 75 people just in those few streets. That's between home visits and um, uh, activities that we have. Okay. So <clears throat> this, if you look at what I gave you, these are just kind of some of the things that we do every day. Do you want me to read them all? Would that be good? Sure. Okay. Um, we are managed by a social worker care manager, who is Nancy Blakefeld. And we receive information on a regular basis in, per in um, person articles and speakers. Because one of the things that you will find is most of the seniors do not have computers. 90% of our group does not. So um, the other good thing is that this is a home-like setting, so family members know that they can contact Nancy if their mom and dad are in the hospital. Nancy makes hospital visits. She um, knows who the contact people are and all the good stuff that social workers do. Um, we give classes to improve cognitive and motor skills. The people are able to stay in their own neighborhood, home, and apartments become this. We have weekly socialization in the community room. Uh, many people live alone. Uh, we give back. We are not just a bunch of seniors that hang out and do a lot. We last over the last couple of years, we've made over 250 scarves and hats that we give to the food cupboard at Christmas. We have stuffed three dozen Christmas stockings for their seniors who are homebound bound, and deliver boxes of food. We delivered homemade cookies a couple months ago to the Ridge Culver Fire Department, Randaquite Ambulance, and Randaquite Police Department for a job well done. You might get some next week, I heard. <laughs> uh, every month, this group goes to a local restaurant where we have lunch. Shopping and doctor's appointments are all local. Transportation is shared by members and staff. Our field trips are usually under $25. And the beauty of this with the grant, it's all free. We don't pay for any of this. So it's coming to a very sad close. I don't know, I know when you meet with Nancy and things, you might be able to talk that we can, that um, whether the town can assume the grant or help with the grant. I know there's a lot of particulars. We have talked to Ted O'Brien. They have met privately with him, and he's come and talked to the group twice. Ted's feeling was about it that the problem with this, it's so exclusive just because of the few streets that it needs to be more inclusive, but that's what I bring to you is saying as a model, I envision that this town actually needs four. One for over here, one going, um, so it would go Kings Highway to 590, down to the lake, up to Ridge, then go from Ridge and Culver towards Empire, then the group that's like over at Pine Grove, and then one south of that Titus Avenue over in there. And the way, we, the big difference is that what's the senior center, it is more of a home environment, but we do some of the same functions. But one of the things I have to say with the majority of the seniors that I'm with, they don't want to leave their neighborhoods. Just the thought of going to Pine Grove is overwhelming. Some of them, truly, it's too expensive. If they have to spend $2 a day to take a bus and $3 a day for lunch, they can't afford $25 a week. They are losing, one of the big things is free housekeeping is provided for the most needed over there, which I don't know how they're going to be able to, um, what they're going to be able to do to help the people get that. Now on the second page, um, I have found out some other things. Um, I will give you, I have some things on the Elder Source here, so you, or on NORC, so you guys can quickly see what this is. One of the discrepancies I see is in information. I went to our senior site and I saw we had a life in Arantiquite brochure, so I came over here and you don't have any over here. You only have them at the senior center. So just a hint, maybe you'd like some senior brochures at the town hall. So, but I went to Catholic Family Center and they have on their website um, life in Arantiquite and they explain what life in Arantiquite is. Now, the interesting thing is, it says the services are free, but on, now I don't know how current this Life in Arundelquite one is I have, it says you have to pay for them. So that's kind of a issue. And um, on that note, there's so many more things, like there's one called ESSIP, 
which is expanded in-home services for the elderly program. And my only point of that is, without these social workers and somebody who knows somebody, you have no clue about all this stuff. It's impossible, you know. And I have to, my husband will vouch. She took me like all weekend trying to find all this stuff out. So um, the other thing is, when I looked at our demographics real quickly for this for the town, it says residents living alone is 31.9 percent, and we never mentioned our seniors and what they make up of our demographics, and a majority of them are living alone. So I thought that was you being doubtful. <laughs> I have it right here for you. Good. <laughs> um, this, is, this was on the website the other day when I printed it up. Um, I, would, for, I know that our group of people, which is what most of my thoughts are on, that um, a lot of them do read the Rondequoit Press. I didn't know if we could get like a senior's corner in the Rondequoit Press. I didn't know if you would consider a short survey that they could do with the top five concerns and we could collect them at NORC or you could collect them here or at the library and also include families because one of the things we find out is, you know, as you know, families are elsewhere, parents are here, and they don't know how to get the help. And after a couple phone calls, it all just gets totally lost. So that's another <clears throat> one of the big things that we can offer by being in this group setting. And backing up a little bit about that, all we have, basically, you need a room and an office and a phone, a sink, and maybe a refrigerator. So we're not looking for a model to replace what you have at the senior center, but just these little neighborhood community things. Maybe we could have them in the fire department, which brings me to thinking about a senior room in the library. I don't know. But... The nice thing is seniors like to do things early, so we could use the room from like 9 to 4, and then all the rest of the time it would be free. It would be free weekends, so it would still be a, a community room. And with that, I went to the volunteering part of our website, and I was really surprised to see in print that we send all our volunteers elsewhere. What we have is the Volunteer Connection, Rochester Cares, and the Community Wish Book, and we don't choose to keep our volunteers in Arantiquite. And with the fact that we have three high schools and it's mandated that they perform community service, that couldn't we get a liaison between the town and the high schools or the seniors and the high schools to help with some of these things? And it's not only for seniors. I mean, there's people who are disabled and things like that. Just snow shoveling, taking garbage to the dumpster. Like I said, if you're 90 using a walker, it's pretty hard. The other thing is I don't know if you're aware that the Mormon Church here also provides community service and they refuse any type of stipend. And personally, I've known that they've packed up and moved people, rake leaves, and they helped my son and daughter-in-law that after their basement flooded came in, pulled all the rugs out and helped them put it all in a dumpster, which was huge. Um, so with that, I just hope you would, could... Come see us. Anybody who'd want to visit, just call Nancy. I will have that all on here for you. The, oh, I'm sorry. The other thing is, I don't know, when we're talking about senior housing, if any of you have heard of Bishop Sheen's Ecumenical Housing Foundation, it does, I knew about it for private homes that you could cause for assistance if you needed insulation, a new roof, whatever, and they would do, even take you critical and some more things. But on the website, I found out they help with senior housing. And here's a list of the local towns that they helped with their senior housing by doing different things for them. Okay. So okay. there's that. And then Thank you. Here's the things on North and all of that. Great. Thank you. So I thank you for your time. Absolutely. I just keep us seniors in mind. We come in all sizes, ages. Disabilities, groups, color of your hair. Absolutely. Well, Whatever. thank you, Miss Wells. And I don't know if I'm going to see you next week or not. I thought I might be out of town. So. Okay. I was going to say, well, I'm going to be there. So. Well, you better be there. there I will be. <laughs> March in this way. <laughs> so thank you, no, everyone, I'll be there. so much. All right. Thank you. All right. The next speaker signed up is uh, Tom Jacobs. Did you want to? No. Okay. Good. Um, and the last speaker signed up tonight is uh, Therese Corrigan Bastic.
Good evening, Therese Corrigan Bastic, 125 Eastman Estates. Uh, good evening, Mr. Supervisor and fellow uh, board members. Um, really want to commend um, this board on the whole process, on reigniting the process and providing ample opportunity and uh, advertising um, the public uh, input. Uh, venues, so it's it's really appreciated as a as a citizen. Um, the changes that you rattled through tonight is uh, proof that you are listening. So thank you again for that. And uh, I think the motto uh, that was in the master plan, "Reach higher than the low hanging fruit," um, we're we're well on our way. Um, the only uh, just real brief couple things uh, that I wanted to cite is um, I was a little confused about the density and the references throughout the document. Um, I think as uh, some of the other speakers had uh, mentioned, you know, if it's ambiguous, um, it's going to open up the door for um, interpretation, and uh, that's what we don't necessarily need. So if we could take a look at that. I didn't see uh, any ownership of density also in that action register that you had. The uh, last point is the Titus Corridor or Titus Hill. Um, large amount of environmental issues, not a lot of net buildable area. Um, people can be creative. Um, I don't know if it's possible to have some sort of vision for that area as well included. Okay. So that's it, and uh, keep up the great work. All right. Thank you. Uh, was there anyone else who wanted to address the board tonight that didn't have an opportunity to sign up? No? You sure? Okay. Uh, so with that, uh, I'd like to thank everybody uh, for their participation tonight and, uh, and for all the, the uh, great conversation that we had. I would ask for a motion from the board to close uh, the public hearing. So moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Uh, motion carries. Uh, with that, I'll just, the, the next, uh, I'll just make a brief announcement. The next public hearing for the comprehensive plan is scheduled for September 18th. Okay, that's the next regular town board meeting, uh, September 18th. Um, so with that, I will take a motion uh, to adjourn. Moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Motion carries. We're adjourned.